Peace and blessings, family. This is Brother Mike X. Welcome to another clip on my YouTube channel, Brother Mike X Speaks. Tonight, I want to continue a discussion that I started two weeks prior in a clip that I shot for my channel entitled, The Brothers Are Gonna Work It Out. The need for black men to reassert a much needed positive presence within the family structure and within these inner city neighborhoods. You know, family, I want to ask you, you know, to take the opportunity again to take advantage, you know, of the clips that we're shooting um, to help us to gain a healthy understanding of what has been done, you know, to bring about the crazy chaotic situation that we find ourselves in today in these inner city neighborhoods that has knocked us down from being able to exhibit the type of unity, organization and presence as parents and adults so that we can, you know, offer our young people the type of discipline, the type of security and safety and opportunity and room for growth in these neighborhoods. Um, you know, there's a reason why our communities are in the shape that they're in. And but to to be able to understand that, you got to know something about the history, you know, of our presence in this country. And, you know, that's one of the biggest things that hampers us today as black people is that most of us have been brought up and have been conditioned to have no knowledge or very little knowledge and understanding of, you know, what has been done to us, you know, since, you know, our arrival here in this country. Um, we were brought here, you know, to be slaves, you know. Um, we didn't come here, you know, on the love boat you know we didn't decide we didn't sign up we didn't you know pay for a ticket you know to get here we weren't brought over here to participate and to be able to pursue you know um liberty freedom justice you know what i mean the american dream that's not why we were brought here we were brought here to be perpetual slaves and one of the first things that was done to knock us down to the level of being, you know, enslaved was to destroy the critical bond and relationship between the males and the female and to do specific things to the male, you know, particularly to take him away from his natural um, role and responsibility of being the discipline. You know, being the strength, being the protector and the provider, you know, in the family structure. You know what I mean? Being the husband, you know, being the father in the family structure. You know, the male image was attacked savagely and inhumanely, you know, in front of the black woman. You know, with the goal being to make her lose confidence and trust in the male's ability to protect her, you know, and, you know, so what was done is, you know, the male's image was destroyed. You know, you had a practice in that time. It was called quartering. Um, you know, what they would do is they would take a male and a black man and they would tie that black man, you know, his limbs, each limb, the, the arms and the legs to four different horses and then they, what they would do they would shoot off a gun and the horses would become scared and they would scatter and run in four different directions and they would tear that black man apart in front of the black woman you know they would lynch you know hang they would you know beat and whip and chop into pieces you know the black man you know um you know and also they would do things to the black woman they would rip you know, a pregnant woman rip the fetus out of the pregnant woman, you know, and destroy, throw the fetus on the floor, crush it under their boot to instill an extreme fear, 
you know, in both parties, but particularly they wanted the black woman to see that the black man could do absolutely nothing to provide, you know, protection, you know, from this extreme abuse. And what happened is, is our black women over time, you know, they became conditioned to lose trust, to lose confidence in the black man. And as they lost that trust and that confidence in the black man, they became, you know, they began to submit, you know, and depend upon more and more to the white slave master. You know what I mean? Not only did they destroy the physical being of the black man in front of the black woman, but they stripped him again of you know, like I said, his ability to be father, to be husband, to be protective, to be provider. And the only thing that they encouraged in the black man in regards to the family or in regards to the black woman was for him to be a sexual stud and to impregnate as many women as possible so that they can keep the slave force refreshed. You know what I mean? Um, And so, you know... In many regards, we're still playing out those roles hundreds of years later. You know, we still have black men running around here and pregnating women and, you know, and acting and believing as if they have no responsibility whatsoever. You know what I mean? To the women that they impregnate and to the children that are, are, are produced from those, you know, those unions, those short lived unions. You have a, a saying in society. You know, amongst our sisters where they say mothers, baby, fathers, maybe, you know what I mean? And, you know, <sighs> yo, so I read a book a few years ago and this book was written um, documenting, you know, the time, you know, after slavery and you know, to capture and to look in on, you know, what was made of, what happened, you know, with a lot of the families that came out of slavery. And in this book, they had a black woman being interviewed and she said something that I'll never forget. She said to the interviewer that I teach my sons to be afraid of the white man, even in their own house. So check this out. Here you have, it's like a double whammy. Here you have, you already took away and destroyed the black presence, the black male presence, fatherly presence, you know, um, you know, of protector, of provider, of strength and discipline. You already destroyed that. But now you have children, you know, boys being raised and you have a mother that is so fearful, you know, that those boys' lives will be in jeopardy if they exhibit any form of strength, of masculinity, you know? So she teaches them to be cowardly, you know, not only in the society, but to be cowardly even in their own house, you know? And the reason being particularly because, you know, all throughout, you know, the slave experience, even after you know, the slave experience was officially over, you know, even into the 1900s, you know, even some would say into the new millennium, you had lynchings, you know, you had people being hung, you had people being burned, you know what I mean? And um, particularly men, you know, you know, to keep them in their place, you know, um, you know, when I say even in the new millennium, some would say because you have a rise of, you know, incidents of, you know, police brutality. You have a rise of this whole stand your ground and, you know, black people, black men particularly being murdered. You know what I mean? Even into today. And so, you know, the women, you know, sought to protect their babies, particularly their boys, you know, and hopefully by teaching them to be fearful that that would stop them from striving to rise up against the oppression and being, you know, set upon by mobs, you know, and being lynched, you know, 
you had a condition, you know, for those of y'all who, you know, this summer y'all going on y'all picnics and things of that nature, you know, Brother Mike ain't going on no picnics because I know the root of that word and that practice, you know, picnic is derived from a practice, you know, called pick a nigga, you know, where you would have white mobs that would go out and they would, you know, take a hapless, you know, black person, particularly the men, and they would you know, have food and music and, and then, you know, the entertainment would be hanging, burning, you know what I mean? A hapless black man and taking pictures and pointing and taking trophies, cutting pieces of the body off and things of that nature. And, you know, so this is why, you know, this woman would say such a thing that I teach my boys to be afraid of the white man, even in their own house, you know? And it must be recognized that even in those times of extreme bigotry and oppression and exploitation and murder, even in those times, we still had giants that rose up and walked amongst us. You know, people like David Walker, people like Nat Turner, people like Frederick Douglass, you know, people like Harriet Tubman and Sojourner Truth, people like Ida Wells Barnett, like Booker T. Washington, you know, people like W.E.B. Du Bois and Marcus Garvey, people like Noble Drew Ali and Elijah Muhammad, you know, people like Malcolm X, people like Paul Robeson, people like Martin King, people like Huey P. Newton, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer, Shirley Chisholm, you know, Stokely Carmichael, you know, <laughs> and so Us submitting today to the lowly stereotypes, you know what I mean, of being hustlers, of being, you know, drug abusers and drug sellers, being, you know, people who have no positive uh, sense of pride and dignity in the way we conduct ourselves in these neighborhoods. It's beneath us, family. It's beneath us. And, you know, we've forgotten who we are. You know what I mean? And I'd say to you, you know, before it's too late, yo, take the time to do the necessary homework. You know, go to the bookstores, go to YouTube, check out some of the names that I mentioned, you know, and the fights that they waged to strive to give us today the opportunity to stand strong, you know, and to take advantage of, you know, the freedom that we have today. You know, to be better, you know, standing on the shoulders, you know, of those who went before us to be better, to be stronger, you know, to live life with dignity and purpose. You know, we have to reconnect, you know, they did not fight. They did not die. They did not struggle so that we today could, you know, fight, you know, rob, maim and murder each other. In these streets, you know, the God that brought us through that Holocaust and sustained us, you know, so that we could still be here and still have a chance. He did not put us here, you know, so that we can live down to these lowly stereotypes so that we could live lives that don't do honor. You know what I mean? To his grace and glory, you know, and the sustenance that he provided to help us to get through you know, these dark times. So I say to you, family, particularly to the men, again, you know, because our women, you know, they've been forced long enough to wear two hats, you know, mother and father. You know, they've been forced for too long to have to carry the bulk of the burden, you know what I mean? To strive to, you know, keep our children alive. And we can see from the growing waywardness the growing lack of trust and respect that our young people are exhibiting for, for us and to us, you know, that the black man is definitely needed to reassert his positive presence within the family structure and within these inner city neighborhoods. You know, so I say to you, family, you know, let us do better. Let us work harder, you know, and don't worry about it. Yeah, we know that a lot of our sisters are angry or hurt. But if we begin to fight, you know, to become 
who we were called to be. I know and return to them with humility. You know, I know that they will receive us, you know. So peace and blessings, family. Stick with me.